Hello, this is Techadooldu and today we are going to test the Regintech Morpheus 2 cooler on the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. Um, if you missed out on the installation of this cooler, I will put a link in the video description below. So yeah, that's not much to it. I'm going to test this with some benchmarks to see what the temperature is going to be like. And I'm going to compare them to the numbers I have from the stock uh, Founders Edition cooler for this card and also uh, a water block that I had installed earlier. So yeah, let's just dive into the benchmarking. Okay, so now that the graphics card is back inside the computer and we can see that we have MSI Afterburner here. Uh, just to show you that all the settings are at stock, we see that we have uh, all the power limits and temperature limits at stock and no overclocking on it. Uh, the fan speed here we can just ignore because it, there are no fans directly connected to the graphics card itself. And I want to start with the Unigen Valley benchmark because I feel this one really punishes the graphics cards really hard. I also have the Corsair Commander Pro here. Like we can show you. Here is our graphics card. This is the temperature that will be recorded in the Valley benchmark. The 20 is yeah, almost 28 degrees here. So this is this is the idle temp that I'm I have recorded. This I'm not sure this one's new. I never seen this on this graphics card before, but maybe this is a hotspot or something. And this is what I am recording the room temperature in. This is the front intake. I have a temperature probe that is sticking out of the front of the case right now uh, so i will see what temperature the room is at so we can see here that there are about six degrees between the, um, the room temperature and the graphics card at idle so i don't think that's so bad uh, compared to my water cooled graphics card I, that that is the exactly same graphics card just water cooled it's now running at 25 degrees, so that's not so bad. I also have the fans connected to the GPU here. It, it is set to 55%, so that gives us around 1250 in average here. Okay, let's press run. And I will run this for about, yeah, 10 minutes, I think. The graphics card speed here is a little bit higher than it actually is. I think yeah, this benchmark bumps it up a bit. Uh, but we can see the temperature here. Maybe too small for you to see, but I will write it down anyways. So we can see here just after some seconds we are up at 50 degrees. So yeah, I will just let it run and I will get back to you. Okay, so we are back looking at this beautiful nature and we can see that it's, it's jumping between 55 and 56 degrees. This is the highest I've seen it go, uh, just barely hitting 56 degrees. So I think that's really good for an air-cooled air card. So now that we have these numbers, we should go and overclock this some. Now that we are outside, we can double check here that the um, temperature were 55, 56, 55, yeah. And we can see that it was stable at uh, 1860 megahertz here. So that's good. So now I want to set the overclock settings. I know worked on the card while it was water cooled. And I just put the power and temp limit to the max. And also put 150 megahertz plus on the core clock and plus 500 on the memory clock and I press the check mark now it should go up we can see that it got gone up to 6000 megahertz on the memory and this is just at idle so we will see that when it go up when we run the test again so I will just start the valley benchmark Okay, so that didn't work so well. <laughs> so maybe if we take away the memory overclock. 
Okay, so it crashed again. I will just try to put the memory to stock to see if that makes any changes. Maybe the memory don't want to overclock as much anymore. I did put the, the core clock up to 150 and the memory clock down to zero. So while I was doing that, the core clock is stable at 2000 megahertz. So that's cool. Uh, as we can see, the highest temperature we got was, oh, we just got to 58. Had a little spike there to 58 while we were exiting the game actually. And the room temperature is still 22 degrees. Um, I also want to do a test with the fans on full speed. This will get the fans up to about uh, 2000 RPM, or just over. I will see if the temperature is the same or not. So again, we have been running for some minutes now and the temperature are better when you put the fan at full speed. Who would have thought that? So now that I can see when the frames are uh, frames per second are quite high, it goes to 54 degrees Celsius. But mostly it's, it is at 53 here. But I will quit the benchmark now because I want to go to another benchmark. Okay, so another test I wanted to try was the superposition benchmark, which is made by the same people that made the Valley benchmark. So before I start this, I want to make the card stock again. So if we put it in the game mode here, we can actually run the same uh, cinematics that the benchmark does, only that it loops forever. So I want to try this at 1080p extreme because that really pushes the card more than 4k optimized i have experienced so just let's just try to run it so i'll just push the cinematic mode Okay, so now this test has been running for a while and we can see that it has stabilized at 57 degrees according to the, the benchmark here. But I want to exit it to see if this is the correct temperature sensor. Just so we don't measure wrong here, but the temperature should be in line with the earlier test. So yeah, the highest we saw here was uh, 58. It spiked to 58. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it seems like it, it it seems like it normalized around 57 degrees. Okay, so let's see. 50 yeah, it was the correct temperature. So we can see here that it went to 57, 58, 57. It went up a little bit, but yeah. 57. So now the fan speed was at 55% or around 1200 uh, RPM at stock. So <clears throat> now we will try with the overclock settings. Again, with 150 on the core. Yes. So let's let's just try the same test then. Okay, so now the test have been running for a while now and we can see the same trend here with this test as on the last that the stock test and the overclock test were about 2 degrees in difference. So now it is at 58 degrees and uh, jumping to 59 sometimes. And yeah, that's exactly in line with the other test, just one degree more. Now I want to do the test with the same overclock, but only with the GPU fans turned to 100%. Yeah, 
after running this with the fans at full speed for a while now, I can see that the trend is exactly the same as the other, uh, other benchmark test. It is at 53 degrees, but it jumps up to 54 depending on the scene. So yeah, still really impressed by that. Okay, now we're back at the idle temperatures. Now I just want to compare the numbers and then I will get back to you. Now that I'm done testing the Morpheus 2 graphics card cooler, I wanted to share my final thoughts about this. So the installation on this was super easy. The hardest part was actually mounting the fans. And if you just be patient, it will not be a big problem. And while mounting the fans, I see that I have maybe very hard for you to see, but I scratched some of the black paint off here and I bent some of it maybe two of the fins a little bit but not that much that they fell off or anything so don't worry about that so the numbers for the stock cooler for this card was uh, 84 degrees under load it kept the 84 degrees all the time uh, and it was quite loud i didn't like that at all so then i went to water cool it but before we got to those numbers again um, i'll just recap the numbers i got from this morpheus 2 cooler so the idle temp was always 28 degrees with the room at 22 degrees uh, even with the fan at full speed so i guess that's just the best it could do 28 degrees but that's that's very reasonable that's just six degrees over the ambient temperature so that's really good um, and in without any overclock just all the stock settings it went up to 56 degrees and that's that's a huge improvement over the, the stock 84. I cannot uh, complain about that. And uh, even in the hardest test I ran, the superposition benchmark, uh, it went up to 59 degrees. That's really, really, really good. Um, while the water block uh, for this card that I ran simultaneously on my other computer, I did the same test there and the highest it got was 42 degrees. But yeah, that's a full water cooling loop and, uh, and of course the water cooling are um, a little bit more effective. But if you compare the price of a full water cooling loop to, well, this cooler, um, I would choose this. <laughs> And even if I used some of the more expensive fans on this card, I think that if you used, for example, maybe uh, some fans you got with your case or just had have, have lying around, I think the cooling for this will be more than enough. There shouldn't be much more than maybe a couple of degrees in difference, maybe, or maybe no at all. But yeah, I ran this in the normal test at 1,250 RPM or about 55% fan speed, and I could not hear these fans over, well, the rest of the systems uh, at all. So I think that maybe I can even have it even higher, but with the temperatures I saw, I don't see any reason to have it any faster speeds than that. And I did run some tests with the fans at full speed and well, it did get cooler, yes. But maybe if it's very warm inside during the summer, I maybe need to put the fan speed up, but that shouldn't be a problem. So yeah, would I recommend this cooler for your old graphics card? Well, yes, absolutely. If you have any of the old blower style or anything, this will be a very nice upgrade. While I did get an overclock on this to plus 150 megahertz on the core, I did have some problems overclocking the memory, but that could be that this card uh, hasn't been used in maybe two years now and it's five years old so maybe the memory doesn't overclock that well anymore. While it didn't get uh, quite as cold as water cooling I think that this is a much better option since well it's much cheaper and it's safer you don't have to worry about spilling water on the graphics card and it's so simple to install so why not? Yeah, one of the problems with older air-cooled graphics cards is that the fans die after a while. And, well, with this cooler, you can fix that by just replacing the fan really easy. You can buy this size for really cheap. Then you can just change the fan when it doesn't work anymore. So then you can keep your graphics card for many years if you want that. So that was my video on the Raging Tech Morpheus 2 graphics card cooler. 
Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you did. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. So I hope to see you there. <laughs> Have a good one.